I invite you to give ear to the reading of God's words. It's found in 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 through 6. My dear children, I'm writing this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. He is Jesus Christ, the one who is truly righteous. He himself is the sacrifice that atones for our sins, and not only our sins, but the sins of all the world. And we can be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. If someone claims, I know God, but doesn't obey God's command, commandments, that person is a liar and is not living in the truth. But those who obey God's word truly show how completely they love him. That is how we know we are living in him. Those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. Would you please pray with me? God, our Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your word. For your word is holy and inspired. And God, we know inspired not just in the writing, but again in the hearing. And so, God... We pray that you would speak to our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, God, that you would take hold of us and that you would not let us go until you have blessed us. And we pray for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're continuing today our series, You Are Strong, from 1 John, where the Apostle John is is being carried along by the Holy Spirit, and he is speaking confidence and strength and resilience into the people of God. We find in the Scriptures that God has not given us a spirit of timidity, not a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And so many times, I think we sort of feel like we have more of the spirit of Eeyore, if you're familiar with Winnie the Pooh, right? I can't do anything, I'm not really worth that much, I'm not that great, and all like this. But listen, we have been given the Spirit of Christ, who is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. We have dwelling in us the Spirit of the same God who raised Jesus from the dead. We belong to Jesus Christ, the soon coming King. And so we know that there is nothing that can stand against Him. We know that there is no one that can condemn us because we have been justified by Christ Jesus. We know that there is nothing and no one who can separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. We know all of this. And so, and so, John, the apostle, declares by the Spirit strength into the people of God. He says by the Spirit, listen to these things he says. These are all the declarations of victory. Your sins are forgiven. You know Christ. You have won the battle with the evil one. You know the Father. You are strong. God's Word lives in your heart. And so the whole point of this series is to claim and to walk in and to live in the strength that belongs to the children of God. To have the confidence, the power, and the resilience of the children of God. Now, last week we started off by talking about the confidence of the redeemed. The confidence that we can have as those who stand before God in the perfect righteousness of Christ, our sins completely washed away by the grace of Jesus Christ. Now today, today we're looking into the assurance of eternal life. That not only we can have assurance of eternal life, but in fact God wants it for us. This is the desire of God that we wouldn't have to wonder, but that we would know that we know that we have eternal life. Life and I, and I think we have to sort of unpack this, so I'm going to have to ask you to hang with me because really what we read here, it, it doesn't initially sort of jive. We have to sort of work our way into it. It doesn't quite click initially, at least it didn't for me. But what we read here in the Scripture is that the heart of assurance, the heart of one who is sure that they have eternal life is also the heart of the obedient. That that obedience is this fruit that God gives that assures us of our eternal life in Him. So, we're going to jump in first of all then by talking about what is heaven's promise. What is heaven's promise? That is, is, what is eternal life actually? Because, you see, eternal life is, it's really more than just immortality. It's more than just an extension of this life. In fact, in fact, 
eternal life, it doesn't just start at death. It's not something that starts at death. It actually begins in the moment that we accept Jesus Christ. The moment we put our trust in him, we are given the gift of eternal life because because eternal life really is a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. It is to be restored to relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Now, hundreds of years before the coming of Jesus, the prophet Jeremiah is given this word that we find in Jeremiah 31, this word of hope, and it's spoken at a time when the people so needed hope. They are very crushed under the weight of the consequence of their own sin, and into that, God speaks this word of hope that this is what's coming. This is heaven's promise. This is the relationship that's on the way. He says, this is God, Jeremiah 31, 31. The day is coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant. That is a new relationship. And he says that in this restored relationship, I will put my instructions deep within them. I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. And they will not need to teach their neighbors, nor will they need to teach their relatives, saying, you should know the Lord. For everyone, from the least to the greatest, will know me already, says the Lord. In other words, everybody that wants to know God can actually know God in this relationship. And he says, I will, give, I will forgive their wickedness and I will never again remember their sins. Friends, this, this relationship with God through Jesus Christ, it is eternal life. And how do we know that? Well, <laughs> John 17, verse 3, Jesus says, this is eternal life right? I'm a really bright guy. I can tell when Jesus says this is eternal life, you can know this is what eternal life is. So here are the words of Jesus. Now this is eternal life. You see how intelligent I am? I can, I can discern what eternal life is now. Jesus says, now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. What is eternal life? It is to know God. It is to know Jesus. That is eternal eternal life and so you see this relationship the moment it begins what we know is that we're actually having a foretaste of heaven we can actually know God now not just know about him but know him and so we're tasting heaven now and when we and when we do die when we when we enter into eternity with Jesus we will know the fullness of what we have tasted now this relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And this relationship, what God says he's going to do in our lives, that we could actually know him in our hearts, that we could know his character, that we could know his love in our hearts, and that he would change us. He would change us so that our hearts match his. He says, listen, the law is not going to be something that's going to be pressed upon you from the outside. I'm actually going to change your heart. So that you become the sort of person that desires the will of God. As a matter of fact, that you become ultimately, that we would become ultimately the sort of people who would naturally do what God wants because our hearts look like His. We are men after God's own heart. We are women after God's own heart. And in that, we can be sure that this promise of eternal life has been fulfilled. And so what what we find in the Scripture is that God wants us to be sure of this, wants us to be sure of this eternal life, and that it it's kind of comes from two directions here. First direction is from the action of Christ. Second is from our response. So first of all, let's talk about Christ's action to actually enable us to have this relationship, to enter into it, and then what he does to keep us in that relationship. That this is kind of part one of being sure that we have eternal life. It is understanding what Christ has done and what he is doing to keep us in eternal life. So think about this with me now. First of all, what is it that Jesus has done to get us into this relationship? The scripture says that Jesus is the sacrifice that atones for our sins, and not only for our sins, but the sins of the whole world. So not just those who are now redeemed, but for all, and anyone who wants it can have this relationship through Jesus Christ. So back to to Jeremiah 31. God promises that we will have this relationship through the forgiveness of sins that he will choose to remember our sins no more. And friends, God has fulfilled that promise in Jeremiah 31 in Jesus. Because of his sacrifice, the sacrifice of his life, he has wiped away our sins. 
so that we can step into this relationship with God. But here's what I've noticed, and this, this has been true about me too, is that we focus on the fact that Jesus died for us to get us into this relationship. But we, we fail to see then, and we don't dwell on, and we don't know the assurance then of the fact that Jesus not only died for us, but that he lives for us. He died for us, and that's true, but right now at this moment, he lives for us. For us to keep us in this relationship. This is Hebrews 7.25. Therefore, he, that being Jesus, he is able once and forever to save those who come to God through him. He lives forever. Listen, listen. He lives forever to intercede with God on their behalf. And then here John says, if anyone does sin, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. So not only has Jesus died so that we could be in this relationship, He lives so that we can stay in it. By the Spirit, He whispers to our hearts. He convicts us of sin so that we won't fall into sin and away from God. He convicts us of our sin to pull us back to Him. And when we do sin, even though that's not our goal and that's not our intention, He says that He intercedes for us. That by His grace, He will forgive us and He will hold us tight in this relationship and I hope understanding that that you can understand a bit more of the height and the depth and the breadth and the length of the love of Christ for you that not only did he die for you but at this moment at this moment he is interceding on your behalf he is living for you he is living for you and so we can have this security this sense of confidence in eternal life because of all that Jesus has done and is doing to get us into and keep us in that relationship of eternal life if we want it he wants it and he'll keep us in it but the other part the other part of our assurance it comes from us and it comes from our response the scripture says and we can be sure that we know him that is that we have eternal life we can be sure that we know him if we obey his commands Listen, there's something supernatural that's got to happen to a human being in order for us to lay down the love of self, to take up the love of God. There is something supernatural that has to happen to us to want to lay down the love of the world. There is something that that has to happen in us that only God can do that would make us, that would make us lay down the things of the flesh, and take up the things of the Spirit. It is only the one that has encountered the manifest presence of God. It is only the one who has come to know God, who would see God and see His beauty and realize that He is the beauty that we've always been desiring, that is the desire of our hearts, and that we would have a heart like David's. You remember David's heart, he says, better is one day, just one single day, day in the presence of God I I would rather have just one one day in your presence God than a thousand elsewhere to have that heart of David to have the heart that knows that Jesus is that treasure buried in a field who's worth everything who's worth everything to know that he is that pearl of great price he is that thing that we've been searching all of our lives to that is the heart that has been touched by the living God See, there is something supernatural that has to happen where we we come to delight in God. We see His beauty, and we just want more of Him. We just want more of Him in our lives. The Scripture says those who obey God's Word truly show how completely they love Him. That is how we know we are living in Him. You know, listen, it makes me sad that there are so many people So many people who will say that they're going to walk through the gates of heaven. And yet, they seem to want nothing to do with God in this life. And yet, they they seem to want nothing to do with the commands of God. And yet, they don't want to come before God and stand in His presence and worship His holy name. And I just want to ask, and I don't mean this disrespectfully, and I don't mean to be crude or mean or any of that stuff, but I just want to ask, who do you think is in heaven? What do you think heaven is like? Heaven, listen, heaven is shaped, is formed. It is ruled by the heart of God. You remember what Jesus teaches us to pray. He says, 
This is what you should pray. This is what your heart should look like. He says, thy will be done. You remember this, right? Thy will be done where? On earth as it is in heaven. Friends, in heaven, in the presence of God, in the fullness of the presence of God, all is in alignment with God's will. All is in alignment with His purpose. And He says, this is your heart that you desperately want the will of God as it is in heaven on earth. God, would you break into this world with your beauty, with your truth, and would that be true in me? God, your will be done in me as it is in heaven. God, I want you to have all of me. That is the heart that can know that we have eternal life because, friends, only God can do a work like that in the human heart. Only God can do a work like that. And what I'd like to say to you is that if you, don't have, if you don't have that sort of passion to know more of Him, to give more of yourself to Him, to get more closer into His presence, to get closer to Him, if you don't have that heart and that passion right now, what I want to say to you is that it is enough. It is enough that you want to have that sort of heart. God knows your heart, and it is enough for you to just want to have that sort of heart. God will honor that because the Scriptures tell us The Scriptures tell us that those who draw near to Him, He will draw near to them. That's a promise. If you will draw near to Him, He will draw near to you. The Scripture tells us that we will will find Him. He says that I'll be found by you if you seek Me with all of your heart. As a matter of fact, just this week in our journey through the Bible, we read in in 2 Chronicles 16.9, the eyes of the Lord search the whole earth. You know what God's looking over the whole earth for? He's He's searching the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to Him. If that's what you want, if you want to be fully committed to Him, if you want to be all in, if you want to give Him your everything, know that He's looking for you to strengthen you. He's looking for you to touch your heart, to lift you up, to help you to know that you know that you belong to Him. May it be so in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you please pray with me? Oh Lord, we do thank you for your great love. For it is because of your great love that we are not consumed. In your great love, you came, Lord Jesus. And you, by your life, your suffering, your death, and your resurrection, have opened life to us. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that even at this very moment, you are interceding on our behalf, that right now you are for us. And God, we thank you that we can know your presence, that we can taste and see how good you are. And God, we pray that you would touch us just now, that we would step into your manifest presence, that our hearts would be yours, God, no one else's but yours, God. And then we would be changed. Then in fulfillment of your word, that you would write your instructions on our hearts, that we wouldn't just be a people who want to do what you want. We'd be a people, God, whose hearts are for you, who would naturally do what you would have us to do, God. We want hearts completely devoted to you and in that devotion to find our strength. We pray all of this in Jesus' mighty name, and together we say, amen.